good morning. It's really a pleasure to be here and, and present some of the work that we've been doing at Intermountain Healthcare in, part, in partnership with a, a variety of other folks. Um, so let me get right into the presentation. So first of all, just a little bit about us. Uh, Intermountain Healthcare is an integrated health delivery organization based in Salt Lake City. Um, we have uh, hospitals, clinics, a health plan, medical group, uh, home health services, et cetera. So we do the full scope of, of healthcare um, across Utah and southern, and, uh, southern Idaho. Um, that's 22 hospitals, over 185 clinics, plus um, another 100 or so affiliated clinics. And we have a strong history of uh, informatics innovation at Intermountain, where we've built most of the things that we have actually used in practice across our hospitals and clinics. But most recently, as probably a lot of people have heard, we have decided to um, incorporate Cerner as our EMR, so replacing all of our legacy systems. That's important because we want to continue with our informatics innovation capabilities, and one of the ways we see doing that is going forward with open standards-based services, things like FHIR. In fact, in the contract that we signed with Cerner, we specifically said that you must develop an open standards-based services uh, services to your underlying system so that we can continue to innovate on top of that. And they agreed to that. And so we've actually established a $3 million a year joint partnership to co-develop that system. Coincidentally, when we signed with Cerner, we act our fire actually was just starting to come about. And this was really uh, serendipity for us because we both agreed that this would serve as sort of the starting foundation for the partnership and for the for the start of this uh, this service-oriented architecture that we wanted to do, or the service-based architecture. So about this pediatric growth chart app, now I don't want to take credit for the entire app. This was actually developed by Boston Children's, uh, the first versions of it, um, and you can find it on Josh's uh, gallery site, and I, I assume that probably many people who have been to the Smart, on, Smart site have actually seen this application. So we've taken it from what was mostly a demo application and turned it into a full production application. Uh, put it through a full QA cycle, added several features, um, tested it out on top of the Cerner profile. Our target users for this application are our uh, uh, newborn ICUs as well as our pediatric clinics. Um, and it is at, for direct patient care. Um, people do use it in real time in taking care of, of patients. It provides a visual display of growth data for our pediatric patients uh, against some standard. And the standard may vary depending on the particular child, so you want to compare them against an adequate cohort to see how is this child growing, whether from being a preemie to, um, to a teenager, and finding out are they on their, on their proper uh, growth, uh, growth curve. Um, a little bit more description about the growth chart app itself. It is a smart on fire app. Um, it is open source, and including all the changes that we have made to this application have been put back into the open source community, so it's on uh, the GitHub site. You can find all of the source code that we've done as well as the existing code from the, from the first versions of the applications and any updates. And you can run it either as a standalone app, and by that, as a smart app, um, it, does, it does imply that there's some integration uh, with, a, with an OAuth server for identity and maybe some patient management. Um, but it can pop up either as its own window or as we wanted to do, we wanted to integrate it inside of the Cerner, uh, the Cerner application framework so that you don't actually have to worry about switching between windows. It actually runs fully inside, and I will, I will demonstrate that in a little bit. Um, it uses fire resources to access growth um, data directly from the Cerner uh, the Cerner repository, and so we pull out growth data, um, heights, weights, um, head circumferences, uh, BMI, um, and then other sort of demographic information that we need in order to determine where, where you're at compared with, uh, compared with like children. And so we need things like date of birth, um, uh, estimated, uh, 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 sorry, uh, estimated delivery date, uh, gestational age, and sex, because the, the growth charts are different based on sex. And then um, the I wanted to note that the fire services themselves are provided by Cerner. We didn't do anything on that part. We just asked them that they make those services for these particular data items available to us so that we could actually access this data and run the application. Um, the current state of it is actually in use today in our NICUs and pediatric 
clinics that are on Cerner today. We're still in sort of a mixed mode of some using legacy systems and some using the new Cerner, uh, Cerner EMR, um, but it is actually in use today. Uh, we'd use for this particular one because of when we started implementing, we're still on Fire DSTU-1 um, and uh, OAuth, not OAuth 2 at this point. And I'll talk a little bit about some of our, our future plans for this um, at the end. And it replaces a Cerner module that was a little clunky. Um, uh, pediatricians, uh, neonatologists didn't like the looks of it very much. And it also replaces um, a growth chart app that we had actually designed uh, many years ago using Utah uh, uh, child growth data to develop our growth, our growth curves. So this was something that was very familiar to us, is developing this and actually um, incorporating real data into, uh, into, the, into the application itself. So let me jump right to displays of the app. Now I'm, I'm showing you screenshots only because we, I'm, I'm showing you actually live, this running inside of the Cerner framework. And to do this, I would actually need a secure connection and a, and a, a VDI display and et cetera. And so we decided let's make some screenshots so that we don't have to load a lot of this on here. So again, uh, probably many of you have gone to Josh's site, have probably seen this application. So I'm not gonna try to go through a lot of the functionality here because it's functionality that exists. It's a very nice display. It gives you a lot of information right in front of you as far as the, um, uh, the, the length. In this case, I'm showing uh, actually a child that's in the NICU who was, who was obviously premature. Um, I think this, this baby was 24 weeks when it was born. Um, normal is 39 weeks. Um, and so you can see the, the length of this child compared to, um, compared to normal range. So that blue, the blue uh, shaded area is the, is the growth chart information that you get from, in this case, it is the, um, uh, it is the Fenton curve uh, for, for preemies. Um, and so, so these, these data in the blue and then in the orange below show you what the, what the limits are uh, for, those, for those growth data. And then in the green on the right-hand side, you can also see um, head circumference data. Now, visually, what you can see is this baby started off at 50% or better for, for that particular cohort of preemies. And visually, you can see that, that this baby has actually now gone um, much below growth, growth levels. It's much easier to see in this visual display than it is in, um, uh, in a ta in table form. Um, I'll also show you here, I was a little bit hesitant actually about showing this particular one. This is a true baby. Um, you can see that there's some really outlier data, data there on the length. Um, and I was somewhat embarrassed to, to, to say that we had actually collected data like that because obviously a baby doesn't jump from 38 to 58 centimeters overnight. Um, but um, I think this is important because visually this is very easy to pick up and go back and potentially correct or do something with in a table form, that's not so easy to find. And I'll show you that actually here in a second. So this is, again, a baby who is a, a, a premature baby. And one of the, the features that we actually enhanced on this is in this drop down on this, you can see a list of, and that may be a little bit small for you to see, but there's a list of various growth chart data records that you can use to compare babies against. And these sets of, of national data change over time as, as new data come in. And they also, we can also add new sets, like Fenton, for instance. The CDC and the WHO data are publicly available. The Fenton records are actually licensed. And some people do not have licenses to run those. And so one of the changes that we did with the application, the original application actually hard-coded all of the growth data within the app itself. And so as data changed, you actually had to go back in and change the coding of the, rec or of the, uh, of the application in order to get, in order to, update, um, in order to update curves or to incorporate new curves. What we did is we pulled those out into configuration files so that then you can add on the fly any sort of new data that you want. And one of the things that we added was Fenton because we do have uh, four NICUs uh, within Intermountain Healthcare and we wanted to be able to show these growth, uh, growth curves against those. We also um, added our own data on Down syndrome, uh, where there was some published data on growth, uh, growth averages for Down syndrome uh, babies, and so we wanted those to, um, we wanted to be able to compare against those, and so we wrote the, uh, the, the growth chart data for those, put those in a file, 
and then had those up in a matter of hours versus what would have taken days, weeks, um, uh, maybe longer to actually incorporate that data. Um, just a quick switch over now to the tabular data. So this is what you would normally see in most um, height, weight, um, uh, sort of vital signs displays, uh, this sort of longitudinal uh, table data. And it's hard in this to compare, okay, heights and weights because they're measured at different times, um, uh, not with the same consistency. And again, trying to find those outliers is much harder when I'm looking at them in a tabular form than it is in a visual form. And so this is why this application has been particularly useful for us. Here's just another example of a, of a, of a, of a child who is um, a few months old and just showing where they're at. Now we have less data on this particular baby because this one is only since um, Cerner was installed at this particular hospital, which has only been uh, about a year. And so there are fewer measurements on this, on this particular baby, but you can see um, we can get some, some nice curves on this person or on this baby. And um, we're still doing head circumferences because of the actual, uh, the actual age, where head circumferences is, is more important than BMI to us. Um, across the top of the display, um, let's see if I can, I don't know if I can get the, well, there are, there are tabs across there that say zero to 13 weeks, zero to six months, et cetera. Those change automatically depending on uh, the actual age range of the patient who you're measuring. And so it's important that those switch to, to get you to the right growth curves. And they also bring in the right um, growth data from the, those configuration files that I talked about before. And then one last example I think we've got here is, uh, is an older child, again, who we've got, just got a few measurements on, and now I just wanted to show that the, the application automatically switches to being, um, uh, to using uh, BMI instead of head circumference when you get to a certain age. Uh, one of the other things that, you know, I talked about earlier, incorporating this as an integrated application inside of Cerner versus being a pop-up standalone window. It could still work as a pop-up, but when we incorporate it inside of the Cerner framework, one thing we do is we get rid of the patient banner that normally comes with the growth chart app. So if, again, if you go out to Josh's uh, gallery and you run this application, you'll see a patient banner with their name, sex, uh, date of birth, et cetera. We eliminate that because Cerner always already provides that information. So that's configuration information that we actually added to the application itself. So it knows if it's running internal to, um, internal to uh, an EHR and then it will eliminate that patient banner. Um, one other uh, change that we made to the application was to change the output, the printed output for this. Um, normally what you got was just the graphs and parents really wanted the, um, uh, the actual tabular data to go, with the, to go with the graphs so that they could actually see uh, without having to you know, figure out on the graph what was the weight, what was the height on this. They can see that in the actual tabular data. Um, and that's very handy for them. So this is a shared, uh, really a shared app that the clinicians use with the parents real time um, so that they can see how is my child doing. It's important to parents to know are they doing better, worse, on par with, uh, with their normal cohort. And so getting this data really helps them. Um, just, uh, just to talk about a few of the benefits of this particular application, I've probably gone over a few of these already, really better visualization of growth with this particular type of app versus a tabular app. Um, uh, it has improved uh, robustness and scalability for new standard growth chart curves. I talked about being able to remove those outside of the application itself, so anytime growth chart curves are updated, we automatically get those. Um, and then better output on the printed side and collaboration with parents, which is one of the most important things for us uh, when we're working with parents, really trying to make this patient-centered care. Our future plans are to write data back to the EMR. Today it's really a read-only application, and that's all that Cerner supports today, but we're trying to move them in the direction of doing uh, write also so that we can write back what is the percentage today, uh, where, where is this person on the growth chart, as well as if we calculate BMI. And then um, we want to update our FHIR and OAuth versions so that we're at the latest version of FHIR and latest version of OAuth, and those will come out with a, uh, the next release of, uh, of Cerner and the application. And then finally use FHIR profiles so that we have true semantic interoperability 
uh, of, of this application that it knows when it says height, this is exactly what I mean. When it says length or weight, this is exactly what I mean. And that's the application. I thank you very much.